Hello, Internet. It's been a while. I've been playing Guild Wars 2. And that is why I haven't been making videos. However, I thought I would uh, do at least one here. Just a few uh, tips that I've found while I've been playing. Uh, it's mostly for new people, I'm sure. A lot of the people who have been playing quite a bit already know about most of this stuff. But, in no particular order, um, one of the big one of the big gold sinks in this game is actually teleporting around the map with these waypoints. And the basic rule is that you got a base cost. So I'm right next to this one. And uh, it's based on your level. Right now at level 50 it cost me 66, maybe 65 gold or copper if I'm right on top of it. No, 66. But if I get further away, then it costs more. 67, 70, 75, and so on. But the one spot where this breaks down is inside cities. So for example in Lion's Arch here, if you're in Lion's Arch, teleporting around is free. However, getting there still costs money. So say I want to get down to the canal ward here from where I am. That costs 82. But it only costs 71 here. Or even less on this side. So one of the things you can do to cut your costs, if you don't mind, an extra loading screen is to, well, we'll go here. You teleport to the nearest point in the city and then teleport again to where you want to go once you're in the city and that'll save you a few bucks. There's also an even better way. If you're going to cities or places near a city, you can basically avoid the cost altogether. So see, now that I'm in here, it's all free. The way that you can avoid the cost completely, wherever you are, is you open up the hero panel, and you go to the PvP section, you can go to the Heart of the Mists. When you first come here, you'll have to uh, do a little tutorial. It's three uh, three hearts that you have to do, but they're all they're not real hearts. They're super simple. And then, from that point on, you'll be taken automatically straight to the heart of the mists. And as you can see, you pop out right here. And just a few feet away is a gate to Lion's Arch. And of course, from Lion's Arch, you can go to any of the other major cities. So that's completely free. The only downside to it is if you have a mediocre computer like me, you have to sit through three loading screens to get to one of the racial cities. And maybe more if you're going someplace outside of there. So sometimes the convenience of just teleporting is kind of nice. But if you're trying to save money, this is a great way to do it because those costs add up really quickly, especially once you start getting to higher levels. It's like a silver or more at a time. Alright. Another thing that uh, I wish I had known when I was leveling. I hadn't paid too much attention prior to the start of Guild Wars, but uh, if you know exactly what levels All you have to do is step you're going to get uh, skills and traits, that can make a huge difference. So... You want to save up your skill points at first for when you start to unlock these utility slots. Um, you get these at 5, 10, and 20 levels, respectively. So what you want to do is make sure that you have enough points um, if you want to have these slots open or these that you're uh, putting them in efficiently. Like I put in more than 5 in this first initially and then that meant it took longer for me to get to here. 
and it was after I had more slots open. So try and plan it out a little bit, um, but it's not too big of a deal. If you end up short on skill points, I would suggest go to other races starting zones and do the skill challenges. You don't have to wait until you level up to get another skill point. You can go and do the challenges all over the place. Um, a lot of them are just the really simple uh, like point of power ones where you basically sit and watch a bar go up for 30 seconds and you get a skill point. So the hardest point, the hardest part of it is just getting to them. So if you can plan that out, that'll make a big difference. You'll maximize your uh, your fighting ability by having those uh, those skills as soon as you unlock them, and that makes a pretty big difference. And then as far as traits go, you get your first trait, um, or rather, you unlock traits at I believe level 10 or level 11. So you want to prepare for that. You have to get a book from a skill trainer which costs 20 silver which is a pretty decent amount of money at that level so you want to save up for that and have it ready as soon as you hit that level you can uh, get your traits and that makes a pretty big difference too because whatever you decide to pick here um, gives you 10 into a stat which is pretty nice at that point and that can, uh, that can really help you out the other thing I would encourage is that uh, you want to pick one of these and go 10 points into it before you do anything else because that lets you get the minor and uh, major trait bonuses whereas uh, if you do like 5 into 2 then you would just get 2 minor ones and maybe that's what you want but at least plan for it decide what you want um, look at all of these skills in the different trees you know maybe you're not that excited about uh, getting toughness, but you might be really excited about one of the uh, one of the talents that you get in here. So, planning ahead can make a big difference, and that was one of the things I didn't do on my first character, so I was a little behind. <laughs> what other tips can we do here? Ah, uh, this one maybe won't uh, apply so much anymore. When the game first was going, there were a lot of people ending up in overflow servers. And basically all an overflow server means is that if your server is really crowded in a specific area, you'll get put on another server so that you can still play, but you're not playing on your usual server, basically. And the interesting thing about this is that everything is completely separately instanced because you're on a different server. So one of the nice advantages of this is that all of the crafting material nodes are completely different on the different servers. So if you do end up in an overflow, one quick way to make money is to just go around and collect all the nodes and then when it's uh, when your regular server is ready you can go there and collect them all again. This is especially efficient in some of the areas where there are farms or things like that. I know, let's see here, Ooh, we're lagging a little bit. I know for sure that in Queensdale, in this area here, there's a bunch of farms and there will just be, you know, 10 or 15 crafting nodes in this little area. Places like that are a great spot to just stock up on that stuff. And then you can either use it or, you know, just sell it and make a little extra money. But that is a super quick way to do it. Another important thing that I see a lot of people missing, and this is, uh, this is a great way to lose money if you're not paying attention, selling on the trading post. It's great to sell stuff. Um, a lot of things are basically selling at cost or below now. But uh, oh, a lot of crafting smell. materials sell well. Um, Ooh, certain masterwork smell. items and better sell well. So it's definitely worth at least looking at the uh, trading company. And what's even better is that you can access it anywhere. You can sell stuff right from the field. 
which is incredibly useful. You just can't uh, pick up things that you've bought until you actually go to the uh, the trading post NPCs. But one of the things that uh, is ridiculous that people don't realize, you have this listing fee here. Now, let's look at something pretty common. So, carrots, for example. Well, maybe that's not a good one. <laughs> What else have we got here? Let's find something like journeyman maintenance oil or cheese triangle. All right, so cheese triangles. You've only got a listing fee of one here, right? And everyone's selling them for two because that's the vendor price, basically, or one above the vendor price. But the problem with this is that your listing fee is 5% and then it's obviously a minimum of one gold but uh, what you don't see on the screen is that when you sell the item they take another 10% cut out of it so in general something like this so you've got 13 since this is 5% the total that you're going to be spending in fees is actually 15% so you multiply this times three, and then you look at the price you're selling it at. And a ton of stuff on the auction house, if they would actually do this little calculation, they're losing a significant amount of money. So you want to make sure that you do that. You take that uh, listing fee times three, you subtract it from this, and then see if that's the price that you want to sell for. And uh, make sure you're not losing money on your auctions because that's a little depressing that uh, so many people are losing money there. <laughs> now, as far as leveling, I've I've been reading a lot of the Guild Wars Reddit and a little bit of the forums. And at least um, initially there are a lot, a lot, a lot of complaints about people who would quote, do everything in a zone, and they'd end up being maybe level 13, and the next zone is level 15 plus, and they felt like there wasn't enough con content in the game. And I think the problem is that basically they did all the hearts they could see, they did the skill points, and maybe they did the, the points of interest in vistas and they ended up not having enough experience here. So there's a few ways that you can uh, improve that pretty easily. Probably the biggest one is eat food. All food gives you plus 10 experience per kill, which, uh, especially at low levels, is really nice. It doesn't scale. So, um, well, the other thing is that uh, potions will do the same thing. So if you can get food, a piece of food and a potion at the same time, then you get plus 20 experience per kill, which is a pretty, a pretty nice boost. So that will help quite a bit. Another thing you can do is crafting. Even if you don't enjoy crafting that much, I would definitely encourage you to do it in Guild Wars. Basically everything you craft will get you experience. Um, and even more if it's near your level, so keeping up with it helps a lot. In addition to that, the discovery panel, which is how you get new recipes, is by far the best way to get experience crafting. Because when you discover a recipe, you will get something like 150 percent of the base experience that you would get for just well, making it. So discovering a lot of things is much better than grinding out like 20 of the same thing. Um, in a lot of professions it's super easy to know what uh, what the different recipes are. Basically you'll have some crafted component, um, two or three of them, and then a specific material that's made from fine crafting components and you can basically just take those three components and every fine crafting component and get 
a new item with a different uh, base stat. The really big one as far as discovery is definitely cooking because there are hundreds and hundreds of cooking recipes and if you have your gathering equipment equipped like you should you can just gather lots of cooking supplies as you wander around the world. I have uh, I've been leveling cooking and I haven't needed to ever buy any cooking supplies at all and I still have a ton in my bank actually I had to uh, I had to stop leveling it because I literally ran out of bank space with three tabs so that's a great way to make up some quick experience now one thing to note is that each um, each crafting discipline if you max it out from one to four hundred points will get you ten levels and that experience doesn't change depending on your level so if you're level 50 and you go from 1 to 400 in one go that'll put you at level 70 if you're only level 10 it'll put you at level 30 um, a lot of people have gotten to 80 by getting up to uh, 60 or 70 and then just maxing some crafting professions that's one way you can do it but if you're having trouble uh, getting to the level that you need for your story quest or that next zone that's a great way to do it and uh, you can do it the <laughs> the way where you just grind it at the end to get those last levels, but I think it's a lot nicer to do it as you're going. So I would uh, I would definitely encourage that. And then you can get items for yourself as well, so you don't have to buy that stuff or rely on whatever happens to drop for you. The other really nice uh, source of experience. Clearing maps is good, but doing your daily achievements actually nets you quite a bit of experience. And these are fairly easy things to do. I usually find that if I'm playing for maybe an hour, I can easily get the uh, the daily gil daily kills and the daily gather stuff maxed out, no problem. It's very easy. This one especially because each node you get three or four of something off of. And that counts three or four to your gathering, so that's very simple. The only tricky ones, um, daily kill variety can be a little tricky if you're in some zones where there aren't a lot of different things. One thing that can make a big difference is non-combat creatures like rats or <laughs> badgers or whatever little random animals you find out in the world will... I'm trying to find one now, but I don't see any. Um, those will count towards it so that can be an easy way to get one or two points in there. Um, also go after the animals that are yellow that don't uh, attack automatically and those will usually get you a couple too. If you still have trouble with that the uh, the easiest way to do it is just have a couple alts you know and then you just switch from your Asura to your human or whatever and there's completely different animals in the different uh, zones so that makes it very very simple to get that. So usually the one that I end up doing or completing last is the events one. Um, this is another one where if you have alts it can be fairly easy because most of the starting zones have a lot of events just to kind of uh, teach you how they work. So that can be easy if you have low level alts that you can just run one or two events on. Um, you can always, there's some events like for example the uh, where I just was in Blood Tide Coast, this Storm Bluff Isle area is very nice because there's an invasion event right here that gets uh, run every, uh, I don't know, five or ten minutes. I did it twice while I was uh, right before I started doing this video. There's also an event right out here that spawns frequently. So um, just try and find those places where those events happen frequently in your area. You might. Uh, if you're having a hard time, you can stick around and wait for one to repeat or something. But usually it's not too bad if you go looking for them. And uh, especially if you do all the events that you see as you're going around the world. So that can make a really Roots. big difference. And combat. The other nice thing about getting these done is that when you get the whole thing done, you get a uh, achievement chest and you get some transmutation stones in there. You get a little bit of money, so... That's pretty nice.
It's a good reward for a fairly easy thing to do if you're going to be on for maybe an hour or whatever. And if you're really into achievements, you can work on your monthly achievements too, as you can see. I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not doing that awesome at the monthly achievements. I think I died like this, so I have to start over on that guy. But that is a really good way to uh, get an extra level or two. The other thing that... Uh, I've noticed for a lot of people, and I have this issue too, is that melee in this game can be really hard to get your head around. All of the dodging, um, especially if you come from a WoW background like I did, I played a lot of WoW, and that just trains you to uh, not be very mobile. You, you know enough that uh, if there's a red circle on the ground you need to get out of the way, but dodging targeted abilities and things like that. You're just not used to that at all. So, if you want to try doing a melee class, um, it can be challenging. One thing I would recommend is, I had a lot of trouble starting around maybe level 10 or level 15 trying to figure out how to do that. So I switched to a all ranged build, pistol pistol, and that made a big difference. That's a great way to uh, kind of develop your skills and basically circle strafe everything, use your dodges, and with a ranged build it gives you a lot more of a chance to see things coming, and then you can learn a little bit. So I did that for quite a while, and then maybe after 10 levels or so I switched to a more uh, melee centric build. This is sword and pistol, and it's much easier once you've done that. So that's one thing to consider. It's also a good idea, even if you're uh, even if you're pretty good at your basic leveling, to have um, a melee option and a ranged option. So right now my alternate is a short bow. The other nice thing about that is that it's all uh, AOE. So it's really nice to have some some good AOE options for events especially. A lot of times you'll be swarmed by enemies in these big events and there's so many people attacking it's hard to pick them off and get those kill credits so that you can get a good uh, medal for the event. But if you've got AoE, so I, I can just drop an AoE poison on a crowd and then just uh, do cluster bombs and take out, you know, half a dozen enemies in one go. That makes a really big difference. Yeah, so I think that's all the tips I have for you. Um, I'll probably end up doing some more Guild Wars videos, but uh, I just kind of kind of figure out what I want to do with them. I don't think anyone wants to see me uh, <laughs> leveling a character from uh, 1 to 80. That might be a little tedious to watch, but uh, I'll keep fraps up, and if I uh, find some interesting things, maybe I'll do that. Maybe do some some guides for skill points or vistas or events. We'll see what happens. So. Um, thanks, Internet. I'll see you next time.